We've got the box from JLC PCB. Let's go ahead and open this up so we can get, oh wait, right. Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. We're going to continue the ESD monitor series by assembling these circuit boards for the first time. And I'm just gonna open this box and you might notice there are three circuit boards in here. Pay no mind to the additional circuit boards. All right, here, let's unpack a couple of these. You can see we got some OPO7s, the solder joints look super good. I've seen better router work, but hey, that's fine. A couple fiducials. Everything looks fine. Silk screens not winning any awards, but not getting thrown out either. Looks all right. So we're going to be assembling these boards today. Um, don't really know what else to say. That's all we're really doing. We're going to assemble this board and bring it up for the first time. Let's dive in. They don't put every part on the board, but the parts that we're putting on right now, like they're not hard. You don't even really need to think about it. They kind of put themselves on the board. This type of higher level through, like this doesn't bother me at all. What bothers me is when I'm doing something and I just know that a pick and place machine would do it in literally 30 seconds. And I'm like, man, I just spent an hour doing something a pick and place machine could do in 30 seconds. It's not so much about, you know, me versus the machine. Like, I'm fine with losing against a machine. But, I don't like wasting time. So, I am super thankful for these pre assembled boards right now. I haven't actually taken a sticker off of any of these, just out of fear of how loud it's going to be. I have a feeling the answer is quite quite very loud um but i gotta say it's loud enough that you will notice when it is going off sweet okay let's do a little sanity check oh i need to put on the fuse all right one second i got a surface mount fuse to install when you're doing the first bring up test of a new circuit board of course always 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 Hook them up through a current limited supply just to make sure everything is working correctly. Let's power the board on. Looks like it's saying the mat is high impedance. That's exactly what we would expect when there's nothing installed. Actually, let me make this quiet. Okay, so we put a... All right, I need to screw. What is that? Is that making the screw vibrate? Oh, that is a terrible noise. Okay. <laughs> we have it screwed into the terminals. So now we're measuring one mega ohm. That's what we would expect. Now, if we plug a cable, this is not the cable it's meant to be. This is just, you know, it doesn't short anything out. If we plug this cable, Okay, we would expect it to throw a fault. I need another one meg resistor, quick, before I lose my mind. There we go, one meg resistor. That seems fine, stops beeping. If I hold on to it, it also stops beeping. So now that I'm holding on to it, I should probably confirm how much current this design is passing through my body. Okay, we are passing 1.2 microamps, so that makes a ton of sense. Remember, we have a 12 volt input. We have 10 mega ohms of resistance. 1.2 microamps is the right amount. So that looks great. Now, what if I... Wow. So my resistance right now 
it dropped a half a microamp. Half a microamp, 12 volts. Ugh, math, so hard. Uh, sweet, wait a minute. This should have a short circuit protection as well. So when we short this out, we're supposed to trigger the low error. Why didn't we?